God bless you. Hope everyone is having a great day today. This is Brother David bringing out a beautiful scripture for you today. This is found in Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Paul here is writing to the Philippians who have given to God and he's giving money to God, and he's telling them that God will bless them and meet all their needs. Now, this scripture is probably used for prosperity preachers because a lot of them say that if you trust in God, he'll supply all your needs and give you houses and cars and money and things like that. That's not how God works. What Paul is saying here is these people were given money and offering. They were sharing the what money they had. And he was telling them that if you're faithful, then, then God will bless you. So in concluding his thanks to his readers, Paul encourages them. Paul was confident that God would meet their needs because they were generous in their giving. This is not a promise of wealth or even an easy life. Rather, the concept of need has to be considered according to God's will. What we need and what we want are not always the same. And that's what I'm talking about. You know, this is not about supplying your desires for houses and cars and whatever a prosperity preacher may say. It's what God wills for your life. But it's in his will. And a lot of times you won't get something like that. He's not promising here, if you give money, you're going, God's going to give you an easy life and money. That's not what he's promising at all. Because as we said, what we want and what we need are the two different things. God tends to bless those who will use the resources that they have according to his purpose. That's something that Paul observed specifically what happened with the Philippians. Their needs will be met through Christ, the one who made and controlled all things. They would never lack with Christ as their provider. We see this from earliest parts of scripture. God is known as the Lord who provides. Genesis chapter 22. God tells Abraham to offer Isaac on the altar. So he goes to do it. He's about to kill his son. Then the Lord says, "Don't I, I know now that you're faithful. Don't hurt the child. If there's a ram caught by his horns, they offer the sacrifice. Abraham names that place God will provide. God will supply all that they have need of in both their body and their spirit. God who lives in glory created everything. Therefore, his wealth is more than enough for everything that you could ever need. God supplied all that they needed, and God will supply all that you need in Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way by which God's love comes to people. Our faith in Jesus will bring us true wealth. God will bless us abundantly and take care of all of our needs, both the material needs of this life and spiritual needs, because you can't outgive God. He multiplies when giving back to you and what you have given. With no hope of return and do not expect to get back, give with that hope of return. God will give you so much that your cup will not be able to hold it. And you know, there's been so many stories of, of people who maybe it's not from played at church. Maybe it's a charity bucket or you know something where they felt the Lord tug on their heart and tell them to give something. And it may be the last scrap of money they have, but they do it. And God bless them. I mean, it's it's the story of Jesus. They're in the temple. Him and his disciples are watching people put money in. And, you know, there's these well-off people, very rich. They were given extravagant amount of money. 
but it was to be bragged about from people. It wasn't because they wanted to bless. They were doing it because they had money and they wanted they wanted people to go, well, did you see how much he put in there? That was great. That's what they were doing it for. But this little poor lady coming with two mites, they called it, and put, and it was literally all she had. So she gave everything that she had and put it in there. And Jesus said that she gave more than the rest of these others who were put in extravagant amounts of money because she gave all that she had. They gave of their wealth, you know, just in amounts that will people, make people brag. But this lady literally gave everything that she had. And when God, when you do that, God will do amazing things. And I'm not saying that to tell you to give all your money in hope, the hopes that God will do something. But when you feel that tug on your heart, and that's what we're talking about, when God will supply your needs. When you feel God tugging at you for whatever it may be, to bring food to somebody, to bring clothes to somebody, to gives money to somebody or whatever it may be the Lord's call may call you to do. There's different opportunities. And if you allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you, the Holy Spirit will lead you to give to something. And it may be your last dollar. And you may go, Lord, I, I don't, this is my last dollar. I can, you know, this is my last 10 bucks or whatever. And I, can, I want a hamburger real bad. And I don't get paid till next week or whatever it may be. But you, but you feel God saying, just put it in there. And that's what it's, that's what he's talking about here. God will supply all that you need. It doesn't mean that we're going, you know, that you give money and you'll be rich. And I'm not talking about giving money to people to ask. I'm talking about when you feel the Holy Spirit tugging at your heart. And you give. God will give it in return out of his riches. It won't be, he won't give you houses and cars and things like that. But everything that you have need of, he will supply. You have enough money to to get your bills paid, to get food on your table. He'll provide for you. He will provide for you to have a rich, cushy, easy life. You see, for those who have experienced this, when we've experienced the Holy Spirit asking us to to give of ourself in this way without expecting anything in return. Then we understand what the scripture means of how God gives back and how it, and what it exactly it, that happens with. But if you don't know, then that's where we show the gospel at the end of every video. Because you may have hear those prosperity preachers telling you, if you give X amount of money, then you're going to have houses and cars and money and women and whatever it may be that they promise. But that's not the heart of God. If you never had that Holy Spirit tug in your heart and you never answered that call and you never seen God give you his, out of his riches through Jesus Christ. Because you only intellectually know Jesus. You only understand what he did on the cross, but you don't know him personally. You don't have that personal relationship with him where you have seen God give out of his riches through Christ Jesus. And I want to introduce you to Jesus right now. The gospel in a nutshell is that because of Genesis chapter 3, sin entered the world and sin created a wall that separated all of us from God. That's confirmed in Romans 3.23 which says, All of sin and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death, meaning that because of our sin, not one of us is worthy to go to heaven. We're all destined to go to hell. But as John 3.16 says, God loves you so much. That God the Son, Jesus, left heaven, became a flesh and blood human. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says that Jesus lived a perfect sinless life. But Jesus became sin for us to pay our sins. Meaning that when Jesus was on the cross, Jesus put on our sin so that when we believe the gospel message, we put on his righteousness. And now when God looks at us, God doesn't see our sin. Now God sees Jesus. The gospel message is 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and rose again from the dead on the third day, according to scriptures. Romans 10, 9, if we confess Jesus with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then we'll be saved. And as we see at the end of John 3, 16, whoever believes in Jesus will have eternal life. 
John 14, 6 says that Jesus is the only way to heaven. Jesus' blood is our ticket. Jesus' blood covered our sin debt, past, present, and future. Jesus' blood broke down the wall that separates us from God. In 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness. So if you sincerely believe and surrender your life to Jesus when you're not saying words to please someone, or to get a get out of hell free car, but you really believe in what Jesus did for you on the cross, and you truly want to live for him now, then you'll be saved. This is Jesus' free gift to you, and all you have to do is accept it. Because we can earn our way to heaven, we can't be a good enough person, and when we stand before God, it won't matter how much we've given to charity, it won't matter that we think we're a good person, that we never robbed or killed anybody. Our works, our deeds are not good enough to get us into heaven. Ephesians 2 8 9 says it's by grace that we're saved through faith. It's not of ourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Meaning we can't earn it, we don't deserve it, but God loves us enough that he made a way. And we'll always follow the gospel with the warning of Jesus as him in return, because right now you can personally know Jesus, but one day soon, and how soon we don't know, but complete hell on earth will come. We can see it coming, the world is getting darker by the minute the Bible predicts it. And I want you to know to Jesus personally before all hell breaks loose. Because coming is a seven-year tribulation. That will be a seven years of terrifying supernatural events. Each day get progressively worse. It will be scarier than the scariest horror movie you've ever seen, the scariest nightmare you've ever had. It will be a literal complete hell on earth. And that will be when the tribulation starts and the restrainer is removed. And all hell breaks loose on this earth. But right now, before the tribulation begins... We're still under the age of grace, which means right now it's an easy way to come to Jesus. To come to Jesus, all you have to do is sincerely believe in what Jesus did for you on the cross and surrender your life to him. Accept Jesus' free gift, that free ticket into heaven. But after this tribulation begins, the age of grace will be over. And it'll be the hard way. And you have to do more than just believe in Jesus. You have to die for Jesus. But I love you and I don't want that for you. So right now, before the age of grace is over, please turn to Jesus today. You know, we believe that one day millions will disappear along with all the children around the world. And when you hear that all these advantages, know that no matter what may be said, because based on what we're seeing, they may use aliens to explain away what happened. But know if you don't see me or hear my voice, that these videos are not uploaded. If all the children around the world are gone along with millions of others, know that Jesus took us home in the rapture. You know, many have differing other opinions on the rapture. And we're not here to argue about the timing or the reality of the rapture. These theologies really don't matter. The Bible is clear. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed our next breath. And even if we are here to see some of the hell that's coming, who knows how long we'll be able to survive. If we don't know Jesus personally, please take the time to get to know him today while you still have the time. Today is the day of salvation. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. That trumpet can blow before tomorrow. Don't put Jesus off to your... A point in time in your life where you feel ready or your financial secure, whatever excuse you may be using, today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off. In the description box, we have a link to the ABCs of salvation as well as a simple prayer. This is just a template, an outline of what to say. The words are not important. Just a cry from your heart that you're a sinner in need of a Savior. That you're tired of doing it your way, now you want to do it his way. But I pray you got something out of this. If you did, give God glory. But don't take my word for it. Read the Bible for yourself. No one on this earth has all the answers. Only God does. And you only receive your answers through prayer and by reading the Bible. It's so very important to read the Bible for yourself. Just picking random verses or listening to someone read or preach the Bible for a few minutes. You're not going to get the full picture. Not even going to scratch the surface of what's in the Bible. So read and discover the stories for yourself. In reading the Bible, it will strengthen you and help you to face any and every trial, tribulation, temptation, and struggle. In the description box, we have several sources of, to read the Bible if you don't have a physical book. And if you don't believe in Jesus today, tell him you don't believe in him. Ask him to prove himself to you, but be open to accept his answer. If you need prayer or have a praise report, let us know in the comments section. Send us an email or send us a message on our Discord. We have... A thread for praise reports and a thread for prayer requests. We'd love to stand in agreement with you in, in your prayer. And we'd also like to praise Jesus right along with you for what he's doing in your life. 
Pray you got something out of the video today. If you did, give God glory. I can't wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. I love you. Jesus loves you. God bless you. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow or in the clouds.